The Book of True Life, Teaching 6 of 366. The Master Teaches, The Secret of Spiritual Advancement, Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord says, Blessed are you who come to listen to the lesson of the Master, for my teaching is the seed that you will deliver to the future generations. You are the firstborn who will prepare the way for his minor brethren with his example. This is the third era in which my divine spirit will overflow upon all flesh and upon all spirits in fulfillment of the prophecy that I made that every eye would see me. Truly, I say to you, that when you communicate from spirit to spirit with my divinity, you will be beholding me, for it is your spiritual vision that I have come to prepare. You are the heirs to my kingdom. The fruit of the tree of life has been given to you by the Father, so that you may satisfy yourselves, and afterward, cultivate its seed. The Father possesses the fields, and He has given them to you, His children, naming you laborers in His domain. Those who have understood their mission and were able to cultivate the fields have rejoiced, and they offer me their satisfaction. Those who perceive the path adorned with fragrant flowers and believing that the tree did not require vigilance and care in order to bear fruit, today find themselves weary. Along their way, they found so much misery, sin, and pain that they felt powerless to lighten the cross of their brethren. They had barely started the journey when they felt tired. They dedicated themselves to healing the sick, and they also became ill. But the Master is still among his disciples in order to give them new lessons and help them to arise. I say to you, ask and it shall be given, for I am your Father. My teaching, filled with love and patience, will convert you into gentle sheep who will obediently follow the voice of their shepherd. Do not forget that before the Ark of the New Covenant, you pledged to comply with the precepts of my law. Yes, O oh disciples, your mission is of peace and unity. You will have to reconstruct my temple, because through you I shall bequeath my word, my prophecies and mandates to mankind. I also say to you, if you are the heirs of the Father, why do you dare to prevaricate or adulterate? Do you not understand that by doing this you will intensify your restitution? Behold the reason for your ailments and vicissitudes. If I have regarded you as the first, do not become the last. Occupy your place and keep this grace until the end of your journey. Do not be divided. Form only one family. Only thus will you be strong. Do not become conceited. Behold that your fields are small, and still your sowing is meager. Always be humble, and you will be exalted before the Father. Those who were weak yesterday will be the strong ones of tomorrow, of that tomorrow you long for which should be like the breaking of a new day, whose sunlight will illuminate your spirit. Then you will be helpers of one another, in order to support the burden of the cross. Do not regard my work as a burden, nor say that the fulfillment of the beautiful mission of loving the Father and your brethren is tiresome for your spirit. 
What is really tiresome is the cross of your own iniquities and those of others, for which you will have to weep, bleed, and even die. Ingratitude, incomprehension, selfishness, slander will be like a burden upon you if you allow them to lodge within you. To the stubborn man, the fulfillment of my law would seem difficult and fatiguing, because it is perfect and it does not protect iniquity or falsity. But for the obedient, the law is his defense, his support, his salvation. I warn you and prepare you for everything, so that you will know how to spread my teachings with true charity. Illuminate my spokesmen, so that my ray of light descends upon them as a human word, but full of heavenly essence, to nourish, purify, and heal the multitudes. Soon the number of my spokesmen will increase. Men and women will speak extensively, and I will reveal great teachings through them. I am speaking to you, and I am watching over you. Do not slumber like the disciples of the second era while Jesus prayed in the Garden of Olives, because your adversaries will surprise you. Pray together with your master, so that your prayer may invest you with courage, and you will not be intimidated by sounds of alarm. There is someone who doubts my presence even though he is receiving my communication through his faculty. And the reason is that on judging his life, his words and even his thoughts, he considers himself unworthy, impure, and he believes that my presence in him is impossible. Truly, I say to you, all these people through whom I communicate are impure and sinful, but I contemplate their constant effort to be more deserving in transmitting my divine word and my strength and my light are with them. This people, who at the present time should be like a man in full youth, has come before the presence of their father like an old man, spiritually tired because of his long journey, overcome by his burden, weakened and disappointed. But in order to help him along his path, I have opened a book the Book of Life, in which he will discover the secret of everlasting peace, of eternal youth, health, and happiness. In my domain, you will recover your lost strength, O my laborers. My word always advises righteousness and virtue. You must not spread malicious talk about your brethren, causing their disgrace. Do not regard with contempt those who suffer ailments that you call contagious. Do not favor wars. Do not have a disgraceful occupation which destroys morality and protects vices. Do not curse anything that is created. Do not take what belongs to others without permission of its owner, or spread superstitions. Visit the sick. Forgive those who offend you. Protect virtue. Give good examples, and you will be loving me and loving your brethren, because my entire law is based on those two precepts. Learn my lesson, and teach it by practicing it. If you do not learn, how do you expect to preach my doctrine? And if you do not feel what you have learned, how do you expect to teach like a good apostle? Tell me, O oh my people, what is it that you have analyzed and practiced up to now? My word is clear and simple, and you still have not been able to interpret it. However, I have come to illuminate and guide you along the path of light. Do not deviate from that pathway or turn back, neither should you travel in haste. Because of my love for you, I have come to teach you, and I am anxious for you to come to me and lift up your voices in song as the angels do. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth toward men of good will. I also wish to hear a word of repentance from you, your sincere confession, in order to comfort and advise you as a father and be your best friend. Today, you still ignore all that I will reveal to you during this phase. Step by step, I will keep on indoctrinating you. My teaching, known by a portion of mankind, will reach its splendor when the time comes. I have not called upon wise men or philosophers to benefit by their understanding. I have chosen the humble to make them the spokesmen of my word through whom my spirit transmits this communication and rejoices seeing that you recognize me. The fountain of my love is overflowing. Do you wish to receive me? I am within the essence of my word. Combine your hymn with that of the angels and praise me. All that you ask for your spiritual progress, I will grant you. You are listening to the word of the Father. My gaze penetrates your hearts, and in some of you I perceive the hardness of a rock and the coldness of marble. However, I allow water to spring from those rocks, and my love and tenderness will give you the warmth that your spirit needs. I created your body from matter, and I gave you my divine breath. I endowed you with a conscience so that you would live recognizing me. And from time to time, I have come to give you lessons filled with wisdom which elevate your spirit. In the second era, I sowed my seed of love in you, and today I come to cultivate it. At the consummation of the times, everyone will be with me, as I have always been with you. I have polished you along the pathway. For I long for you to be cleansed and virtuous, so that you may become my good disciples. Live by being watchful and prayerful, and all suffering will be tolerable. You will not fall into temptation, and you will feel that my spirit, as the Father, will protect you. Be strong in your ordeals. Remember Jesus in the second era, when he was offered the cup of bitterness and he foresaw the pain which awaited him. Then he said, If it is possible, take the cup of suffering away from me. Let not my will be done, but yours. You, who also experience pain and suffering on earth, do you not wish to imitate him? Do you not wish to follow him? Why do you have less fear now when I speak to you as the spirit of consolation than when I spoke to you as a judge during the first era and as the master in the second, since I am the same spirit who has spoken to you in the three eras? By chance is it because I speak to you with gentleness? I indoctrinated you in the second era. And today, I come to offer you the same nourishment of my word, because you are my disciples, and I want you to be nourished by me. Resurrect to a life of grace, and take advantage of this precise time in which I am teaching you. Afterward, when you have received all that I have prepared for you, I will ask you to give an account of your deeds on this and all periods. For when I came to earth and became man, you conversed with me, and you received my lessons, like today. But during that period, while some of you believed, others doubted. And that period of grace, that opportunity for the advancement of your spirit, has passed. But the Father gives new lessons and ordeals to his children for their spiritual elevation. And during this period, I give you one more teaching in order for you to see the promised land nearer. I have spoken through the faculty of different spokesmen, 
And since they are imperfect because they are human, you have doubted. But truly, I say to you, that I have come to avail myself of them, because I know them, and I have prepared them throughout the centuries to present them before you in this period as the interpreters of my word. I have come to seek you, for my love for you is great. I have planned a destiny of restitution for each creature in which the loving justice of the Father is reflected. In spite of your errors, I am revealing to you your mission among mankind, but it is necessary for you to meditate deeply and become worthy of it. Keep in mind that I am not only manifesting myself before you in word, but also in inspiration and in revelation through dreams and visions. O oh my people, you still have not perfected yourselves, but you will be with me when you have been purified through your virtues. If today you consider yourself ignorant, I will illuminate you and you will speak and surprise mankind. When you are prepared, your desire will be to collaborate with me in the work of salvation for humanity. I am teaching you the truth and showing you the way so that you can prepare yourselves and with your prayer and your deeds you can imitate me, recalling my examples of the second era. May all the acts of your life embrace love and truth, so that through them you may give testimony of me. Remember that not everyone who pronounces my name loves me, nor does everyone who pronounces my name worship me. Only those who comply with my law bear witness to me. Now I come to give you more time so you may progress along the ladder of your perfection. And do you know what the secret of your elevation is? It is love, sincerity, the purity of your heart and your good deeds. That is why I have said, Clean the cup inside and also on the outside. Be watchful like the prudent virgins of my parable. Keep your lamps burning. Speak firmly about my doctrine and do not fear or be ashamed to be my disciples. For if today you deny me, tomorrow when you are convinced of my truth, you will experience sorrow. If you do not recognize me through my word, Recognize me through the miracles that I have performed among you. What I promise you through the faculty of the spokesman, I have fulfilled along the path of your existence. Why do many deny my manifestations as the Divine Spirit when you are living in the time of the Holy Spirit? If you ask me for proof about these revelations, I would give it to you, but if I submitted you to a test, what would you do? You would feel weak and small. I want to see in you the faith that the sick people showed during the second era, when they appeared before me, that of the paralytic, the blind, and the incurable woman. I want to feel loved as the father to be solicited as doctor, and to be listened to as the master. Today, I have not come to be sacrificed as in the second era. Instead, my spirit will spread itself in enlightenment, in essence, in all my children, in order to guide them to safety. When you have progressed along the path of your elevation, you will form only one spirit of righteousness, of peace, to intercede for all your brethren. Unite your love with intercession of your spiritual mother, because the reign of justice is near at hand for all men. Practice charity and give to your brethren as I have given you. Meditate on my words and feel responsible for your obligations. Why you sometimes forget that I have come full of love 
to forgive your faults and give you an opportunity to begin a new life. Why do you fall into a routine when I am preparing you to travel along the road of evolution, where you are discovering new and vast horizons and endless incentives for the spirit? Do not be moved only at the moment that you listen to my word. Do not weep for your faults if you do not feel it deeply or make false promises of reform which you will soon break. Be watchful and strong in order to be firm in your determinations. And when you promise to reform, do it firmly and come to me joyfully to say to me, Father, I have fulfilled your mandates. I have obeyed you. I have honored your name. This is the time foretold in which I speak to mankind, and I want you to form volumes of this word that I have given you, in fulfillment of my prophecies. Afterward, you will make extracts and analysis of it, and make it known to your brethren. Do you wish to undertake this mission? I will allow you the time necessary to perform your duties, which I have given you in my work and outside of it. Be active, and there will be peace and happiness in your spirit. Carry on without becoming conceited or confining yourself within a circle of egotism. Be a support and an example for your physical and spiritual brethren. Your mission is not limited to work only for the incarnated being, but you must also help the discarnated ones, those creatures who are in need of love and charity who are remembered by a very few. It is not enough to believe and recognize my manifestation during this period. It is necessary to practice the doctrine that I am teaching you. Do not allow the children to stray from the pathway for lack of teaching. Keep in mind that their evolved spirits might stumble over the rough terrain of an errant course after being prepared to fulfill greater missions. A Parable In the midst of a flourishing garden stood a venerable old man, happily contemplating his work. An overflowing fountain of clear water sprinkled his cultivated garden. The old one wished to share his fruits, and he invited travelers to partake of his blessings. There came to him a man, sick with leprosy. The old one regarded him with love, received him, and asked him what he was seeking. The traveler said to him, Do not come near me, for I am a leper. The old one, without feeling any repugnance, allowed him to enter. He gave him shelter in his home, and he nourished him without asking the cause of his illness. The leper, while under the protection of the old one, cleansed his body, and, full of gratitude, said to him, I will stay with you, for you have restored my health. I will help you to cultivate your fields. Afterward, a woman arrived at that place, with desperation reflecting on her face, and the old one asked her, What do you need? And tearfully, she replied, I cannot hide my sin. I have committed adultery, and I have been turned away from my home, and have abandoned my small children. The old one said to her, Do not fall into adultery again. Love and respect your spouse. And before you go back to your home, drink from this clear water and purify yourself. But the woman replied, I cannot go back, but allow your calling to reach my home, and I will remain at your service. The days passed, and the small children who had been left alone went in search of the old one, for they knew that he imparted charity, and he said to them, What do you seek? And they answered, We have been left alone in our home. Our parents have abandoned us, and we have come to you in search of bread and shelter, for we know that through you we will find them. The old one said to them, Come in, your parents are with me. Rest and join them.
everyone was reunited, and in that blessed company, they regained peace. There was forgiveness and reconciliation, and they returned to their everyday life. The regenerated father, cleansed of leprosy, sheltered the woman under his roof again, and gave warmth to his children. She, repentant and cleansed, was a refuge for the man and a cradle for her children. The children, who thought they had lost their parents forever, gave thanks to the old one for having regained them and for permitting their home to be restored. End of the parable. Truly, I say to you, if you seek me in the midst of your greatest problems, you will always find a solution for them. I am the old one of the parable. Come to me, for I do not reject anyone. Instead, I avail myself of your ordeals to purify you and draw you nearer to me. Come one and all, regain your peace and your health. Drink from the clear spring and be saved, for I am the book of life, and I have presented one more page in order for you to study and be strong within my teaching. Do you wish to progress along this path? Know my law and comply with each one of my precepts. Do not offer bitterness to your father or make me suffer. Behold that my sacrifice is constant. You carry me to the cross at every moment because of your doubt and incomprehension. To you men, I have granted a heritage, a treasure, a woman of whom you are the overseers in order to love and preserve her. And nevertheless, your companion has come to present her complaints and tears to me because of your lack of understanding. I have said that you are strong, that you have been created in my image and likeness, but I have not sent you to humiliate the woman and make her your slave. I have given you strength so that you may represent me in your home, strong in virtue, in talent, and I have given you a woman as a companion and as a complement in your earthly existence, so that you may find fortitude to withstand the ordeals and vicissitudes through the love of both. Now I am calling you to my kingdom, so that you may be saved, but you must work and earn merits in order to climb toward the path of light that I have outlined for you. I anxiously await you. Come, and you will be welcome as obedient children, and there will be rejoicing in heaven. Why do you feel fatigue in your spirit when I give you strength in every instant? Do not drift away from me, even when there is tiredness or coldness which mankind has imposed upon you. I am the resurrection and the life. If you confide in me, you will regain your strength and happiness. When you are in need of support, turn to Elijah, your shepherd, and he will sustain you. When you need consolation and tenderness, turn to Mary, your heavenly mother, and feel her caress and her balsam. Recognize her love. She feels your pain, and she accompanies you in your sorrows. How great is her suffering! when you go astray from the pathway and walk blindly after beholding this light. Pain has flooded the heart of mankind. Today, that prophecy has been fulfilled, which states, parents will deny their children and the children their parents. Brothers will deny and hate each other. You will also behold how the homes can be places of discord and hostility. But I have come to stop you along the path and tell you to eliminate those destructive weapons and not destroy one another, to flee from that chaos, to come and follow me in this work of redemption. I ask you, have you not received strength and consolation in my word? Have you not been moved before my presence? Yes, O disciples. If the flesh does not confess, the spirit recognizes me. It gives me thanks and discovers the essence of my love within the depth of this word. Did I not promise in the second era 
that I would return as the Spirit of Truth? Behold how I have fulfilled all that I have promised. Study, O disciples, so that you may teach those who will come after you. Philosophers and scientists will seek you, and I will speak to them through your faculty. And thus I will demonstrate to them once again that I have availed myself of the poor and the humble. Arise, O laborers, and sow the fields that I have prepared for you. For very soon I will come as administrator and judge to ask you for the harvest from the seed that I have given you. I invest you with my grace, so that you may be humble teachers of your brethren and heal the sick. Welcome those who are in search of light and be enlightenment for all. Advise and convert the sinners, but do not boast of being my disciples. When you feel the suffering of your brethren and are able to comfort them, when you truly love and do charitable deeds without publicizing them, you will rightfully be called my disciples. My peace be with you.